I'm going to say I almost don't know where to start, but other than to say, Mr. Noraster, I disagree and sometimes agree and partially agree with people. I disagree with you so totally. Um, you're sitting in your safe office looking at facts that you believe are accurate, which they're not, and side. not talking to the people who live at the border, the people who work at the border, the people that are suffering, whether it's in Arizona, California, uh, Texas, and now, of course, the entire United States of America. Let me say one thing. Anybody that believes this problem is only a problem for the southern border is wrong. This is a problem for the United States of America. You know, just to give you a little example, a little different route, didn't come over the border. Did you ever hear of a man by the name of Danilo Cavalcante? He's the escape, I know, quite a sensational thing that went on. German Shepherd got him, thank yes, God. Yes, we covered that. He's a that man that murdered his half. friend in Brazil illegally because he's a murderer, got into Puerto Rico, and then from Puerto Rico got to Florida and then came up to Pennsylvania. Had an argument with his girlfriend. He stabbed her with a butter knife 38 times. 38 times. And, you know, nobody's demonizing immigration. We are almost all of us either sons and daughters or immigrants ourselves. Immigration is a good thing. Legal immigration. What happened to the idea of the rule of law? Frankly, Mr. Noraster, I don't care what you think sitting in your safe office removed from everybody playing with some numbers. Go and talk to people. People who have suffered. And you know who's suffering too? A lot of the illegal immigrants because they're being used. They're being used by these individuals that we know are dispensing drugs, are hurting children, are involved with human trafficking, drug trafficking. We call them the drug cartel, now establishing business in the United States. So the answer is not to just go willy-nilly and radically increase, radically increase the number of illegal immigrants. The answer is to have real borders. The answer is to have the rule of law. And once you establish that, then you look into what needs to be done in our immigration system. We need to support our individuals who are trying to protect us at the border. I feel so badly for them because they are so much held back from doing their job. You know, last, last week I learned of an administration proposal from the Biden administration. And, you know, it, by the way, because of the New York City problem, what did we expect? It's a sanctuary city. New Jersey, where I live, is a sanctuary state. You're saying to people, we're going to fund you, we're going to take care of you, we welcome you, we will give you legal defense. But we don't take care of our own people. Our veterans still don't get what they need. We have a mental health crisis in America. We have an educational crisis in America. But we don't have the money and time for that. But we have the money and time to take God knows who, some of them good people, but doing it the wrong way. Some of them not. And you know, according to your figures, never has any one of them done anything bad. That's just not accurate. It's not. So consider the national security implications of what they want to do to my state. I live in southern New Jersey, Atlantic City Airport. We have the 177th Fighter Guard. You have the uh, uh, FAA Technical Center. Serious, serious facilities that need to be protected. The, the 177th protects the Washington to New York corridor. They wanted up to 60,000 people they're talking about in a town of 50,000 people. That's going to really do well for the education system. But it's your idea. You want to open it up. So let's, let's open it all up. Every country in the world, whether they're good, bad, or otherwise, just let them, let them open it up. We can't absorb that. And I'm, you're not going to answer yet. This is especially concerning given recent reports that we have that there are ISIS sympathizers smuggling Russian and Eastern Europeans across the border, and terrorists have been apprehended who are real terrorists at our port of entry. I don't know where you get your stats from, but we also get stats that are good. So the situation's out of control. Chief Scott, in your written testimony, you mentioned how the terrorist attacks of September 11th were perpetrated by individuals who entered the country through ports of entry. Is the United States at an elevated risk of any type of terrorist attack given the state of the southwest border? Your chief, you have the only want to say what's the truth. Tell us the truth. I, I believe we are, and we forget that there would have been 20 attackers, but one was actually caught by a CBP officer that interviewed him. We're not doing those interviews at the Southwest border. The cartel's picking and choosing who enters our country right now instead of us, and that is a significant threat to this country. Mr. 